I'm told this is what Mitt Romney used to drive to college. So that looks like an ambassador convertible. Now that's a pretty solid car, holy mackerel. You need to put this in a building. Man, that is a rare find. I'm Tom Cotter. The first car I found, I was 12 years old. I'm 61 years old now and I'm still finding cars. That's a rare car. I, mean, I don't know when the last time I saw one of these. And in this series, you'll see that there are still plenty of cars left. If you've ever gotten to the end of a restoration, you know that you have lots of parts left over. Piles of bolts and nuts and spare pieces that you put nicer pieces on. The Barn Fine Hunter series that we've done this year, we have some spare pieces left over that we'd like to put together in one compilation video. So the, the show you're about to see is a compilation of a number of Barn Fine Hunter shows that you haven't seen before. This is kind of fun. This is like stew. I hope you enjoy them. So here we are at Parkway Wrecker Company in Tallahassee, Florida. We met a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who said, I know some guys that have old cars in their towing yard and it's Sunday morning, but I'll call up. And he called up and they agreed to meet us here. So we're gonna see what they have behind that fence over there. Interesting. I'm finding out that towing yards are probably a good resource because these guys are called to clean up people's properties. They go to estates and somebody passes away, clean all this stuff off uh, out of the garage, and they come somewhere and this is where they come. So, you know, if you live near a towing yard, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make friends with, with the owner of that. I'm not really sure what year this Jeep is, probably early to mid 1960s. This is sitting behind a, a towing yard. Um, it's a solid vehicle. It's got some crunches here. Open up the, the hood and through the spider webs here, there's a four cylinder gas motor, one single barrel downdraft carburetor. I bet you could get this thing running in one afternoon, drive it, order parts that are easily available for this to replace the fender. It's already got a hard top on it. I think you could get this for $2,000, $2,500. Uh, get it running in a weekend, make it look pretty over a couple of months, and have a fun vehicle for all summer. That's a sweet truck. It is. It is. 15,000 miles. I, I bet that's original. Wow. And look at this door panel here. Probably original paint. Door tag has only got 15,000 miles. I think old fire trucks are uh, really, really interesting finds. Oh, wow. Is it LS3? This is a 5.3. Uh, this is probably the last error of Mustangs that are still lightweight looking, but you could probably pick up something like this for, in this condition, maybe $2,500 to $3,500. That would be restorable, solid, maybe even running, and restore it yourself for not a lot of money and have something that's fun to drive and it would go up in value. So this is an original truck you found it just like this. Way up the fence. With this paint job on there. Just just what you see is what you get. Wow. You need to put this in a building. Well, I had it in a building. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is sweet. Is that do you think that's original paint? That's original paint on the fenders. I think the truck has been repainted on the cab and the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some time, maybe in the 70s or something like that. Man, that is a rare find. The fairy tale says you've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince. Well, we had to look at a lot of ugly, rusty Chevys and Fords today, but we did find some gems. 
that 34 Ford pickup truck in the f back of Jimmy's house that was sitting under the weeds. I would own that truck in a second. I'd never been to Tallahassee in my life until we got in town last night and just started to ask questions. We found some car guys this morning. They gave us a lead, who gave us a lead, who gave us a lead. We wound up finding a bunch of cars, which just goes to show you can pull into a town not knowing anybody, not knowing where to go, and by the time sundown comes, you might find 100 cars on your own. Get out there, kiss a lot of frogs. You might just find the prince you've always dreamed of. Happy hunting. Yeah, I, I think the, the benefit of this is, uh, this is living history. You know, like, it's, it's an outdoor museum and you know, we might go to a Civil War site and poke around and see cabins that uh, might have been used during the Civil War, buildings, battlefields. Well, kind of in an automotive sense, that's what this is. And th thankfully, here in the New Mexico desert, things don't rust. So this stuff has probably been here 50 years. It might be here for another 50 years. So, you know, we're kind of walking through a little piece of history here. Some people might call this a junkyard and I'd call it a museum. This theory about junkyards. We can see a junkyard, and even if we can't tell the cars, if it's too much shininess, it's, we just pass by. If it's got a little rust patina, that's the one we want to go to. Tell me, what is this place? This thing has been around since 1972. It was originally set up as a towing and storage yard by Duggar's Towing Service here in Albuquerque. Then, uh, when the three partners separated three different ways, Misty ended up with the yard, and he's been collecting cars since he was 18 years old. He is now 73. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, there's stuff in here. Now, Misty's in the 70s, and the Model A Ford that he drove to high school is in this yard. So, again, it's, it's like an outdoor museum. I'm a little bit sad because none of these cars are for sale. He could make a lot of hot rodders happy if, if he would sell these cars, or at least a few of them, and, and they could be driving around in another six months or a year. <laughs> it should probably be dusted off a little bit. Oh, I like it like this. Well, this, this is Dave's 1939 Ford Delu I mean, excuse me, Standard Coupe. It's 1939 Ford Standard. The Woody is a 1939 Deluxe. So if you look at the grills, how, how different they were. <clears throat> Interestingly, Henry Ford was a, a thrifty guy. And these were basically 1938 deluxe grills, so Ford didn't want to throw anything out, so he would recycle them. What was deluxe one year would become standard the next year. So my car would be similar to the 1940 standard, but that's a 39 deluxe. So this being a standard, it was, it was the, uh, there's no blinker. It only had one taillight. You can see back here, there's no tail light on the right side, only on the left side. And this has the V860 horsepower engine. So it had a little tiny gas miser type of engine. And Dave's dad bought this car brand new 
picked it up in Detroit because he got a discount on it and drove it back here to California. It's a great story. Take a look at the steering wheel. There's another difference in the 39 standard and deluxe. The gauges were slightly different. This is a standard steering wheel. You can see it's got the molded spokes. You only see these motors in midget race cars. <laughs> so that's got aluminum heads. Huh. Yeah, yeah, these came with aluminum heads uh, later on. In fact, the next year, which was the last year that Ford built the, the six, the, the 60 horsepower engine. They did have iron heads on mm -hmm. the last year. Can you show us the trunk on this? Yeah, it's got, it's, there's junk in the trunk. Junk in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, there's junk in the <laughs> <laughs> These cars were, you know, where I live in North Carolina, in North Carolina and Georgia back in the moonshine running days, these were moonshine running favorites. Not with the 60 horse, but you could take the 85 horse and probably soup it up to 100 horse. But the trunk basically runs from here all the way to the back seat here there's no the back of the front seat so all that area you can put mason jars filled with uh, white lightning and then try to run away from the cops i bet if you take it to a show this is probably the only v860 standard vehicle yeah, probably yeah well it's a great car and a great story thank you So apparently, this used to be a wine-making facility, and that used to be a rum factory. And so Charlie, who's not here, owns you know these buildings, this built three buildings, the vacant lot, more in the back. It's quite a hunk of real estate. Wow, look at that! There's a Marlin. I'm told this is what Mitt Romney used to drive college because his father was president of uh, American Motors. So they're probably two hornets. Both of them have collapsed in roofs. What a shame. So that's probably worth reviving if you were an AMC guy. Now that's a pretty solid car. Holy mackerel. A 1948 Packard four-door sedan. You know, it's too bad this was taken apart, because look, look at how solid it is. Look at this. Factory air conditioned. Most of these cars had small engines, so driving an air conditioner took a, well, a lot of power away. This was part of American Motors at the time. A J4000 four-wheel drive V8. It's got a 360 engine. So that's a that's an unusual Hudson. Yeah. A Hudson Jet. So that would have been like a 53, I imagine. Hudson Jet. So this was a small Hudson. We saw bigger ones on other finds. This you don't see these. This I guess this is when Hudson was really starting to go out of business. That's a very unusual car. You never see this type of Hudson around. This is 1977 MGB, a Lincoln Continental Convertible. This is a Hudson Hornet. These were great race cars in the early days of NASCAR. It seems to have all the trim on there, the taillights, the grill, the bumpers, all the things that are very often missing on a car like this. So a car like this in fair condition, which is I'd say what this would be, 5,400 bucks, about $10,000 in average condition. And if you brought this to a concourse level, it'd have an a, a value of about 20,000 bucks, which if you think about it, it's not a lot of money, so you know you could uh, you could you could own a really really nice one of these for twenty thousand bucks, or buy something like this for five thousand when they knew how to make metal cars. That's not a Toyota. Um, I think a collector would love to get their hands on this car, pull it out of these this damp environment under the trees, get it in a nice dry garage, 
pull it apart, let it air out, and, and make an appraisal of what they have. But uh, you could do a lot worse than to take a car like this as a project. I think if you uh, cruise around neighborhoods, that's my suggestion, cruise around neighborhoods slowly, and on a bicycle's good, and walking's good, but in a car is good as well. And, and just keep peeking around corners and over fences, and you might be able to find a treasure trove like this, and maybe go home with the Hudson Hornet. But this just goes to show that there are still old cars that are still in neighborhoods. This is not like a, uh, a salvage yard or an industrial park. You know, sometimes you have to peek over the fences and you might find something. We weren't able to meet Fred, but Marlene told us that Fred was not really a restorer. He was a car enthusiast. He loved collector cars. He's in the Hudson Club. But restoring cars was not his thing. Acquiring cars, and she called him a preservationist, somebody that wanted to take these cars so they wouldn't be crushed so that somebody else down the road could enjoy it. So some of these cars you're seeing here, they probably would have been crushed 20 years ago. Uh, he has them and now somebody 20 years later can maybe acquire it and enjoy it. Okay.